I mean, this episode began with the you know proposed titles like "In Praise of Bacon." <laughs> <laughs> You know, like, that's where we begin. I mean, the idea was, you know, how much bacon can Catholics eat? You know, that that that's what I would all say of it actually <laughs> would be would be would be a, a proper title for the episode. I mean, the answer is yes, yes. Uh, the answer is yes. But as yes. you say, it's not it's not without controversy. I mean, that's why I love that narrative. Just thinking about how people would object to a pig roast, a hog roast on campus is is really remarkable. I didn't see that coming and. Even as we've talked over the, I mean, if you shared that, I'd totally forgotten it. But like <laughs> getting protested by both animal rights activists and then people people having concerns about how that would make um, some of the Jewish students at UVA feel. I, I mean, I get those tensions, right? They're real tensions, and right, they are. But but no, we we are pro bacon, um, and importantly, I would say not only because it's possibly the most delicious thing in the world. It is, yeah, it is. Um, but because the Lord says we can eat it, I know. The gift of the resurrection. Uh, it's uh, it's truly a wonderful thing. But but um, you know, beginning with and I love the the, the sort of principles you've laid out in that controversy of UVA because it brings up you know what why the question is a question at all for Catholics. Yeah, because of course we take so seriously what God revealed to Israel. So I've got here a Bible. It's not the Ignatius Catholic Study Bible yet. It hasn't shipped. It hasn't so, shipped. So we, we were unable no, to... Uh, that Bible's been 25 years in the making. I'm still waiting for my <laughs> copy of the Ignatius Catholic Study But we Catholic will get a copy. We, we, I'm, we're both very excited for we'll it. We'll assess so. that later on the yes. podcast, how it goes. But in the meantime, you can get your Catholic note-taking Bible from our Sunday visitor. Okay. Uh, <laughs> the You know, in the Old Testament, you find actually food is really a big deal, and there are all kinds of ritual prescriptions. So just to get a sense of what this is like, I want to read a little bit from Leviticus 11. Okay. okay. All right. So, so here's here's how this begins. You know, uh, and again, we're talking about laws concerning ritual purity. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, "Speak to the Israelites and tell them, of all land animals, these are the ones you may eat. Any animal that has hooves, you may eat, provided it's cloven-footed and chews the cud. Mm. But you shall not eat any of the following from among those that only chew the cud or have only have hooves." The camel, which indeed chews the cud, but does not have hooves and is therefore unclean for you. The hare, which indeed chews the cud, but does not have hooves and is therefore unclean for you. And the pig, which does indeed have hooves and is cloven-footed, but does not chew the cud and is therefore unclean for you. So the reason being, the reason pigs are unclean is because they eat everything basically yes. they don't just eat grass like they, pigs they, will eat whatever, whatever is in front of is them. in front of them yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they eat quite a bit actually i heard recently a friend tell me um <laughs> that she, that he knew of someone who had adopted a what they thought was a, a kind of um you know a, a tiny pig like a pot belly pig like a like a little miniature you okay. know it was supposed like bred down and it wasn't supposed to get any bigger well it wasn't actually a miniature oh no but this family got attached to this pig oh no oh gosh could, they couldn't bring themselves to, you know, sell it or cook it and eat it or whatever. Mm. So they just ended up with this huge pig, <laughs> which kept eating. I mean, it's basically eating them out of house and home, but they just couldn't bring themselves to move on this oh, hog. Oh, that's so good. They, they're so big, they can't play fetch with them either. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Now, like, imagine well, that with right, like, the right, pig right, running yeah. out to get the stick or whatever, but probably eat the stick. Probably, yeah, right. exactly. But oh, then, gosh. I mean, in addition to these prescriptions about all the things that live on land, there are things that live in water. So the creatures that swarm in the water or animals that otherwise live in the water, whether in the sea or in the rivers, those that lack fins or mm. scales are loathsome for you. There it is. And shall always be loathsome for you. So every water creature that lacks fins or scales is loathsome for you. Okay. It'd be like the shrimps. Yeah. Eels. Eels. Well, shrimps kind of have fins. No. Mm. Well, I mean, you're talking like crabs, crustaceans? Well, yeah, they were lobsters. Okay. Of the birds, you mm. shall these you shall loathe. They should not be eaten. They're loathsome vultures, bearded oh, vultures, oh. black vultures, kites. It's kind of hawk. Mm -hmm. um, so we so we get the, the we get the sense. I mean, the prescriptions go on and on, right? Um, that that food is a serious matter, you know. And there are long lists in Leviticus eleven of all of these birds that can and can't be eaten. We heard the prescription about the distinction between land animals, the distinction between which sea creatures can be eaten. Um, and it can feel very overwhelming because it can all feel so very arbitrary. Yeah, yeah. Like the pig thing. Why? It, why it, the it, chewing the cud and mm, why like the cloven hooves? Why is that the freaking criteria that we have? It just seems so very random, right? Yeah. Um, but the point again that 
the Lord is making when he's giving Israel these instructions is about purity, is about mm-hmm. ritual purity, is about cleanliness. So again, when we return to the pig, uh, the pig eats whatever. Um, the point about uh, the point is the same for vultures, we might say. Yeah, I oh, mean, yeah, like these are these are not birds that are eating clean prey. I mean, these are these are the sorts of things that feed on carcasses, and so there's an understanding about the way the body, the way one's own person is defiled by bringing in these things that are unclean. Yeah. yeah so yeah. so rather than looking at these long lists and seeing them as arbitrary, we see an important principle about what it means to be clean, about mm-hmm. being something laid out for the Israelites, um, about what it means to be in a right relationship with God. Father Jacob Bertrand. Father Gregory. A Dominican, a Franciscan, and a Jesuit walk into a bar. One of them asks the audience to subscribe. That's not a joke. Uh, any ways you can improve upon it? Just don't tell jokes. Right. This is not a joke. Please subscribe. Cheers. <laughs>